Hey guys and girls, so we're back and in this video I'm going to show you how to take the menu uh, system we created in the last video and add the functions to make the calculator work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another function and this is going to be to get the numbers we require. So I'm going to call it define and I'm going to call it get nums. Okay, and there's no parameters to be passed or anything like that. And we're just going to set two variables, A, I'm going to say equals... Uh, a float for a floating point number or decimal and then we're going to say uh, input and speech was going to say uh, please enter your first number okay and then I'm just going to copy that and paste it and then I'm going to change that from A to B our second variable name which is going to be B and I'm going to say please enter your second number oh I've probably got a number there okay and then we're going to return A and B so we're literally going to go return A and B um, a simple mistake that a lot of students do in this section or when doing this is they forget how many brackets they've opened and they'll only close one bracket for example like that and that will cause you errors it will cause you um, a syntax problem so just remember every bracket you open one two needs to be closed one two okay so that's done so now we can go down and we can look at our addition function and we can add some stuff in here we're going to get rid of that test line that i put in in the last video and we're going to need obviously to pass the addition function to parameters we're going to pass it a and b okay now don't think that this a and b here relate to this a and b here because it doesn't functions are self-contained okay so i might call this actually bob and this tom and then I might return Bob and Tom okay it doesn't really matter what you call your variables in your functions as long as you know what they mean try and keep it simple so I'm just gonna call I'm gonna literally call it a and B okay and I'm gonna return a and B and you have to if you're returning them you have to return the names you've used B okay um, so then in this second function uh, I, this could be a, this can be a and b it doesn't matter it's not gonna sort of conflict or anything but it's up to you for this I could uh, for this I'll just look I'll just call it uh, z and t just so it's different uh, just says so we don't get confused with the a's and b's up here but it could be a and b so we've got z and t so it's expecting two things from that and then what we need to do is we need to have another variable and let's call it um, x for example and that could equal uh, z plus t okay and then we could return um, x okay but that gets a little bit complicated it's like z and t x da, da, da. so that is why I like to sort of keep it simple and just do a and b so A and B and then we can have C for there and this will look a lot better once we just do this A plus B okay and we're returning C so you can see here within this self self self-contained function we're getting two variables from somewhere so this could be two numbers like one and one and then we're creating the variable C which is going to be our total and that's going to equal A plus B so one plus one is two so C becomes two and then we're returning the contents of C. I hope that's clear. If you've got a comment, please comment below and ask any questions. Okay, I know that when you're first starting out with functions, it can be a little bit confusing. So that's our addition function created. So how do we use this? Well, if we come down to our choices, okay, what we can do is we can actually get this working and I'll show you how the return works. So I'm gonna take out that add there and what I want to do is I want to create two variables number one and number two so let's do that num1 comma num2 
is going to come from or equal git nums. Okay, so let's just have a look at this real quickly. So we've got two variables and they're coming from git nums. So it's going to run git nums. So when it runs git nums, what we it will do is it'll ask for the first number and ask for the second number. And it will restore it will store that in obviously A and B. And then it will put the contents of A and B into these num1 and num2. And the order you do it is important. So for example, if I put if I set say for instance A to 50 and B to 55, num1 will be 50, num2 will be 55. And if I was to switch that around and say num2 and then num1, obviously those numbers would be uh, reversed. Okay, so num2 would be 50 and num1 would be say 55. So the order is important. Okay, so we've got our numbers. So that's gonna run and it's gonna ask the user, what's your first number, what's your second number? And it'll store those into num1, num2. So then what do we need it to do? Well, we're going to need a total. And that's going to come from somewhere. And that's going to come from our addition function. But we need to pass in the A and the B, so the numbers that this function requires to work. And that's going to be our num1, num2. So we can literally just go num1, comma, num2. And there we go. OK. And then, of course, just to finish off, you are going to need to print out the result. And we can just literally say your oh, addition result is comma and then total like so. OK, and that should work. So let's give it a test. OK, we're going to test function add, so the A. Please enter your first number, 50. Please enter your second number, 50. Your addition result is 100. So that worked fine. And what we've got now is we've got something that we can just sort of rinse and repeat because we've used A and B and some variable names that are quite simple. All we need to do is copy we we'll just copy this actually. See, I'm going to replace the multiply function. Okay, and we'll just change that from add to multiply. Okay, and then spread that out of it. And we'll do another one, and we'll call this divide. And we can get rid of our division function there because that's no longer needed then we've got subtract paste that in change the add to a subtract like so and then we can get rid of our subtract one there that's no longer needed and then we've just got our quit so that's all done we need to change what they do so we've got the add we've got some white space there so we need to change what they do so that's plus this is going to be times this is going to be divide, okay, and then subtract is obviously your minus. And then we'll come down and then we can play about here. So we can copy this, okay, copy, and we'll put this into the multiply. And then obviously you've got num1, num2, get nums, total equals add. So we don't want it to be add, do we? we want it to be multiply. And again, here it's not an addition result. Your your multiplication result is okay. And then here we can replace the divide, and we'll change this to divide. Your here we'll change this to division. And then finally, we've got the subtract. Okay, change that to subtract. And then your subtraction here. Okay, and that's it. So that should be finished. 
Um, obviously, we need to go through and comment our code so as we know what everything does in case we come back to it in a couple of weeks' time. Or if we give it to somebody else, so they know what we were thinking when we made it. We can just run scratch. And then here we go. So, right, so we've done the add. Let's try the multiply B. So, first number one times two. There we go. So, once two is two. Okay, and then we can, uh, we could run it again. And we'll do, let's do the divide. Please enter first number three by seven. Okay. And let's try the last one. Subtract. So let's do subtract, which is D. Okay, please enter first number. Let's do 50. Take away 10. It's 40. So there we go. Perfect. Now there was one other thing I said I was going to show you, um, and that was how to simplify the Boolean um, expression. So if choice equals A or choice equals A. So let's get rid of this. Simplify this down a little bit. And here we just have if it's an uppercase B, and here if it's an uppercase C. Oh, and then here if it's a D, and again here, we'll take out the OR. Okay, that's all fine. Now what we need to do is when we get the choice equals input, okay, so we get the choice, uh, what we want to do is change it, and we're going to change it here, and what we're going to say is choice equals choice okay dot upper like that so choice equals uh, choice dot upper okay and let's see if that works it should do uh, run scratch main menu so let's put in a little a and see if it works yeah so that's fine so what that's done is it's actually um, converting the choice to an uppercase so we only have to carry out that one comparison i hope that's been helpful please let me know if it's helped you out comment below hit that like button and if you want to be notified of future videos please subscribe and hit the little bell next to the subscribe thanks for watching mm -hmm.